Hey guys, my name is Ryan. I live in this 2005 Bluebird International School Bus that I converted in just under a year, and I'm on the road full time. Well, welcome to my home. My bus's name is Ellie, and so it's actually based off of the movie Up. The old man Carl's wife's name was Ellie, and their motto is adventure is out there, and my motto is explore every day. So I thought it was very fitting to name my bus Ellie. So up here in the front, we've got kind of the living room hangout area. I've got a dinette that converts into a bed, and you can sleep one over here. And I've got a massive couch that also can convert into a bed. Or if I needed to sleep a lot of people, these can actually come together and do a full king-size bed up front. So lots of sleeping arrangements. As you can see, I kind of went for a cozy cabin vibe. There's lots of different wood tones in here. And one of my must-have items was my ceiling. So I wanted the tongue and groove cedar ceiling, kind of warm up the space. And one of the other unique things about this bus is it is a high top bus. So I'm six foot one. I didn't want to do a roof raise. And this bus was originally, I believe, six six. So it allowed me to build out kind of what I wanted without having to cut the bus in half and jack it up and weld in new material. So under both the couches and the dinette, there's lots of storage. These cushions just pop off real easily. And these are all hinged. So I've got a bunch of camera gear down here, lighting, things like that. Things that I don't use every day go under the dinette and things that I use on a more regular basis go under the couch. Since these drawers open a lot easier than the dinette. So I think if I were to redo things, um, one of the things, and I learned this the hard way, is I did not seal my AC very well. So I had to drop this off the ceiling and make new mounts for it. And I do have a drip in the mounting system. So making sure to waterproof things extra well um, is definitely one of those things I would change. Originally, this was actually designed as two couches up front. Um, but I did my first trip without a living room at all and only having my desk to eat at. I was like, that's not going to work in the long run. So I scrapped the one couch and opted for the dinette. So that was a change on the fly as well. One of the, the design features of this space here, as I mentioned, is for people to hang out. So I wanted easy charging. So there's two USB chargers on that dinette seat. There's two USB chargers on this dinette seat. And at some point, I'll probably add two to the couch. And for a safety uh, element, both the couch and the dinette have seat belts hidden in them. So you can strap three people into the couch or one in either dinette, um, just if people want that extra level of safety while we're traveling. So up on the ceiling, I've got a couple of hooks. So you can actually string up two hammocks in here um, for either added sleeping or if it's raining outside and you want a spot to relax and just hang out. Um, that was an idea that I grabbed from another bus while I was kind of researching stuff and I'm glad that I was able to add those in. During the demo phase, when I had no furniture, I had the hammock hooks. So after a long day of work, I could string the hammock up and just relax for a while. And then one of the things that I really wanted to do was kind of have blackout curtain options for both privacy and insulation. Um, so this one needs a little bit of repair, but these are purse magnets and they drop down. So they really do block out that light nicely. Or there's actually a, a privacy layer so you can roll up the brown layer and keep the white to diffuse the light. But if you're, say, in a Walmart parking lot hanging out, people can't actually see in what you're doing. So because I'm in my bus full time, I knew I needed a dedicated workspace. Um, when I was doing the design elements, I have seen a lot of different options where people have hideaway desks or things like that. I really wanted two monitors. So I'll take my MacBook, set it on the counter, hook it up to my big monitor. And that's really my dedicated workspace. So for me personally, if I didn't have that, I don't think I would be as productive. So being able to sit down and like, you're in the office area, do work, get uh, jobs done and things like that. So I've got my full audio set up for podcasting, video editing for both YouTube and other uh, creative ventures as well. So, the main reason for me living tiny is I had always been curious about it, but my background's engineering, so I graduated. I was in an engineering job at Disney, and the pandemic rolled around. So be, as a, a new engineer in there, I was cut and laid off, um, which I tell people getting laid off was actually the best thing to ever happen to me. It was the push I needed to dive into tiny living, and I would not change it for the world. 
So for me, this now gives me the ability to travel. It has the freedom of lower expenses and my backyard can really be anywhere. So when people ask me how long I plan to be on the road or traveling, my response typically is until I get bored of it. I have a passion for exploring new places. So at minimum, I wanna hit um, all the drivable states in the United States and Canada and kind of see as much as I can. Whether or not I will be in this bus that entire time or if I do another bus in the future, um, I really don't plan on slowing down anytime soon. For me, transitioning from kind of traditional living into tiny house living wasn't super drastic. I was living with three roommates at the time, so a lot of my stuff was maintained in just my bedroom. I think the hardest part for me was having a shop where I could do woodworking and building things to going to a spot where I still have all of my tools, but they're all kind of packed away and contained. So for me, that was probably the biggest thing was just being able to have things out and easily accessible every day to more of a lifestyle where things are packed up. You need to stay organized when you're living tiny. Um, and for me, downsizing wasn't really an issue. I was able to get rid of stuff and be fine with that. So probably the big thing is just getting used to putting everything back in its place and then being ready to travel. As I mentioned, the living room was specifically set up to have a bunch of people come in and hang out. I love to cook and entertain. So even though I live in a tiny house, I was not gonna do a tiny kitchen. So my kitchen is probably over a third of the square footage of my bus, and that was by design. So when people were talking about their design and their regrets, a lot of people said their sinks were too small. And I said, well, I'm going the opposite route. So I picked up this residential extra deep, double massive sink. So it's nice to be able to get all the dishes done, get everything organized. Um, so I love that I have this massive sink. And on that same scale, I decided to go with a residential oven range combo. So this is originally natural gas converted to propane, and it allows me to be able to entertain and have people over. So the other night we did a big taco bar, had a whole bunch of things going on, on the stove. Um, so it's fun to be able to have those kinds of interactions and lifestyle, even in a tiny space. And then I've got a residential refrigerator as well. So up on the roof of my bus is 1400 watts of solar power. And that's how I power everything. I don't carry a generator or any other alternative fuels. Um, but because of all of that, it's very easy to run a residential refrigerator. So again, when it's time to cook, I've got all my spices easily available um, and kind of makes life easy. My countertops are actually construction lumber. So when I got a quote for butcher block, it was like three or $400. So this is DIY butcher block for about $60 in wood to do the entire kitchen. Um, so that was a project my father and I did together and I, I'm very happy with how those turned out. Um, when I was building my bus, saving money was important to me and plywood was very expensive for a lot of it. So these cabinets actually came off Facebook Marketplace um, and I refinished them in blue so they kind of tie in with all the other blues in the bus. Um, everything has latches on it so that when you're driving, these won't open on their own, but yet they're easy enough, you can just give them a pull um, and it makes life easy. Since the desk is over there, those three drawers are kind of my office storage, um, and then just regular kind of cleaning supplies under the sink, utensils, everything like that over here, and it just makes life easy to have everything in one space. I've also got this massive pantry wall over here, which is on drawer slides, so it makes it very easy to be able to reach in, grab supplies, and those lock down while I'm driving. So in my kitchen, because I have such a large oven range, I needed a way to exhaust some of that heat. So up here, I decided to do a fantastic fan, which both has a, it, it's a two-way, so it can suck air out or blow air in. So whenever I'm cooking, I, I'll turn this on high and it'll help the air flow in the bus and kind of keep things well. Um, as well as get rid of the, the moisture in the air when cooking. So I love that I have this fan in here and it really helps keep the bus cool as we're just hanging out and cooking. This is the sad area of the bus. <laughs> um, originally I wanted to do a wood burning stove, but decided to scrap that idea. So at some point this will get redesigned into a more permanent solution, but I've got my diesel heater down on the floor so it can blow heat both forward and backwards depending on the weather. Right now it's hot, so we don't have to worry about heat. Um, but about a week ago, it was freezing outside, so it was really nice to have that toasty uh, temperatures in here. And then I've just got a simple bookcase um, and other office supplies. 
And then in the white thing is all of my electrical. So I've got spare fuses, spare switches, anything that I would need to repair in my bus on the fly, I pretty much keep on board so I'm not relying on shipping and mail and things like that. So as we move our way farther back in the bus, we kind of come into this hallway. Again, being a, as tall as I am, I pretty much had to do a straight walkway down my bus. I know a lot of people will do an offset uh, hallway, but for me, I didn't want to have to crouch and lean and kind of maneuver through. So there's a lot of storage in here as well as my full electrical system. So in the front part of the cabinet here, I've got my batteries on the ground. I've got my charge controller, all of my solar equipment. And again, that's how I stay powered off grid full time. Um, at some point I would love new batteries, but that's just, again, as you're growing and changing, you add new things and upgrade systems. So if you may have noticed, there's kind of a running theme with this wood, this is blue pine. So it's been the header boards in the transition from the ceiling. It's also in my bathroom barn door here. Um, so this was all rough cut lumber that my father purchased and him and I went through and planed it all down, worked with it. And while I was having fun on the road for a little bit, he put together these drawer faces and actually built the barn door. Um, so I love that a lot of his skill is also in here and it kind of ties all the themes together. So I'd mentioned food storage. So these again are very deep. We've got latches on them to hold them shut while driving. And then this is kind of like my cups and bowls and everything. So this drawer is massively heavy, but even one of those little latches keeps everything secure while driving. So whenever I'm doing tours at festivals or things like that, one of the most talked about features in my bus is my bathroom. Not a lot of people decide to try and tile their bathrooms, but as I mentioned, blue is kind of a running theme in my bus. So I, I really like how it turned out. We've got kind of this blue stripe with the tile going around. And on the top ceiling is a curtain that can pull around when you're showering because I've got a composting toilet on board. So you really don't want moisture or water in that toilet. So the shower curtain helps pull it around. Now, since I do a lot of boondocking and I'm off grid, water conservation is important. So this shower head is only 1.5 gallons a minute. And if I'm trying to make my water last, I'll do kind of the military style shower turn it on, get everything wet, suds up, save water, and then rinse. Um, but I've been very happy with it. I've got an instant hot water heater that runs on propane. So if I'm hooked up to city water, I can basically shower forever. Um, but again, since I do mainly boondocking, I try to conserve water while I'm on the road. One of the most common questions everybody gets asked about this lifestyle is A, how can you afford it? And B, like, what do you do for work? Um, so I, as I mentioned, my background is actually mechanical engineering, but I kind of joke that I don't do that anymore. Um, the closest correlation to engineering that I do nowadays is tiny house consulting. So I help with kind of the design, the layout, things like that. But my main focus and passion is actually business coaching and consulting. So I work with clients all over the world who are small business owners that have an idea and they want to figure out how can I turn this into a business. So we kind of work through the branding, development, uh, strategy for sales, and then all the technical build out. So I do help with the web design, payment processing, basically everything to get their business up and running. And as long as I've got an internet signal, I can host my Zoom meetings, have those coaching calls, or actually log into their systems and build them out remotely. So the easiest way to kind of find everything that I'm working on is it's all under the Seeking Discovery brand. So I've got a website with all kind of tiny house stuff called seekingdiscovery.com. Or if you go to any of your major social media platforms, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and search Seeking Discovery, odds are you'll see a big blue bus on that social media and you'll know you found me. So I've got 100 gallons of fresh water under here. What I didn't consider was how thick my mattress is. It's like a 12 inch mattress. So that kind of added up to be a, a slightly taller bed than I had originally intended. Um, but I had the mattress, I loved it. So I was like, another thing, save money on, stick it in the bus, make it work. Um, this is a queen size bed, so you can easily sleep two back here. At the head of the bed is storage. So those, the headboard kind of opens up. So I've got all my 3D printing supplies in there. Um, one of the things that I do for money is 3D print things and sell them on Etsy. So 
I've only seen one other bus with a 3D printer on board, um, and that'll actually run on solar power as well, which is pretty cool. So back here, we've got the second AC unit. Again, it runs off the engine. So unfortunately, when I'm parked like this, it does get kind of toasty back here, but that's why we typically hang out in the front of the bus where we've got all the windows open, airflow, things like that. Back here, we've got a matching cabinet to what's in the kitchen. That will eventually come out one day, and I've got the hookups for an all-in-one washer-dryer combo unit so that I'll be able to do laundry on board. And then, again, storage is everything, so I took apart an old dresser, rebuilt it custom for the bus, and then as well as more storage under. On the outside, I've got my back emergency exit as well as a lift door because this was a wheelchair bus, and so I can access kind of my garage space under the bed where I keep all of my tools and things like that. One of the most sought after things when people are looking for buses is underbelly storage. I lucked out that my bus came with one built in and this is kind of where I house all of my outdoor supplies. So it's got a little latch, it'll hold itself open. So I've got my water hose, my power cable for if I'm ever hooked up or need to fill tanks. And then because my oven range combo and hot water is propane, I needed a safe spot to store that propane. So I've got two grilling tanks down here on this homemade slide. They've got an auto regulator that'll switch between tanks when one's empty. So for my diesel heater, I've got this uh, additional tank down here that I run the fuel in. Some people tap into their actual driving tank. I decided to just add this. And then I've got kind of this tubing, which is a hand siphon. So I can actually siphon out of my driving tank, refill the heater tank. Um, so I'm really good to go for weeks on end without having to worry about heat. When I was designing my roof line of the bus, I knew I wasn't gonna do a traditional awning, but I wanted to be able to have a way to string up a tarp or lights. So on each of the ribs of my bus, I added a massive eye screw bolted into the framing. And so we're at a festival right now with a friend's bus across the way. We were able to string up this massive tarp for shade, some fun bistro lighting, um, and having those grommet holes all, all up there has been fantastic. So I would highly recommend if you want to be able to do a tarp awning type setup, do these during the demo phase. And as you can see inside, you don't even see it with the finished ceiling but it makes a world of difference out here. One of the things I decided to add was a ring video doorbell. I don't know that I've seen it on any other bus yet, but it does connect to my Wi-Fi. If I'm away from my bus, somebody can ring it and it'll go straight to my phone so I can actually answer it, answer questions, or it'll record a message. So it's one of those things, I love smart home devices, and even though I'm mobile, I wanted a way to incorporate some of those devices. One of the things that was really important to me when figuring out life on the road was staying connected. I run a business online, so really having internet is massively important to my lifestyle so that I can continue to travel. Um, a lot of people use something like a WeBoost and whatnot. I actually found an internet provider that had an outdoor unit. So I've got a 16 foot flagpole that I put up when I'm parked. I can put my cellular receiver on top and it runs into a router inside the bus. Out at this event that we're at, there's not a lot of internet service, but I've been able to take Zoom calls, share with other people, and we've got like 10 or 15 people bouncing around off this internet signal. So if you're looking to do full-time life on the road, finding a reliable internet solution is massively important. So this is on the AT&T network and it's through a company called Nobles Networking. So they do unthrottled internet with uh, larger data packages. So they're a wholesaler of data. And when I get to a site, I'll put the antenna up, use an app called Find Tower, and it'll show you all the nearby towers. So I see where the nearest AT&T one is, point in that general direction, do a speed test. And if I'm happy with the speed, I leave it all set up. I think one of the, the most common things that people say about this lifestyle is we didn't start it soon enough. So if you're thinking about doing bus life, going tiny, van life, any of the above, and you're not certain, just jump in and go for it. The community has been fantastic for me. Um, there's been times where I've broken down and needed to figure out how to fix the bus. And I was able to send messages to people across the country and they all kind of pooled together talked me through it when mechanics weren't available. And so if you have any reservations about this lifestyle, just come to a tiny house event and meet some of us and you'll see why so many of us have chosen this lifestyle and the community around us. 
So as you guys can see, I love this lifestyle. I am happy to share it with you guys. As we say in bus life, it's never goodbye. It's see you down the road. So if you guys happen to see me out traveling, come introduce yourself. I'm happy to give you a tour in person. And again, if you want to check out more of my build, what I'm doing, head over to those social medias at Seeking Discovery. And we'll see you guys down the road.